Today I have something a little different from my typical flashlight or electronic review in a writing pen from Astrolux, the TP01. This is Astrolux's first pen on the market and is available in titanium, aluminum, and stainless steel. So let's take a look how they did. Thanks to Banggood for sending this to me to take a look at and review. I'll have a link with a discount in the description below if you're interested. Please make sure you check that out and click the link as it does help the channel. A reminder guys, I do have social media websites on pretty much all the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. If you're not following me, make sure you do and you'll uh, know what's up and what's new and coming up along soon. All right, here is the packaging that the light comes in. It's a uh, white cardboard box with a silver outline of the pin on it on the end cap here. I'll roll in a picture. It tells you what color and uh, option the pin is in. Here is kind of how the light is packaged. You get the pin itself here in a nice um, felt like pay, uh, pouch with a little button. My button's a little bit temperamental. You've got to kind of get it on just right. On the back's kind of this faux leather. It's a nice pouch and I've ended up using it a decent amount and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Included is a bag of accessories which I've emptied out into this box lid here. You get a T6 Torx wrench for the clip screws and a small Allen key for the set screw on the inside. You get an extra screw um, for that set screw and then two extra screws for the clip and an extra spring. One quick note is Astrolux does sell a pin holder for this pin that uh, kind of goes with the style um, in a kind of a raw titanium or aluminum, um, but it's kind of expensive and only uh, $10 less than the aluminum version of this pin, so uh, I didn't opt for that on that account. So let's talk about construction here. The TP01 pin comes in three different material choices, as I mentioned. The one I have uh, here in front of me is a anodized titanium in the, what they're calling the wave pattern, but it's also available in stainless steel and anodized aluminum in a couple colors. Titanium is available in uh, raw machine uh, polished, and then two colors as well. And as I mentioned, this is the wave pattern. And I just love this. It looks like a damascus steel or a kind of a mokutai that's been flame anodized. I just love that. This is flat. It has no texture to it, but you get a lot of blues, purples, a few bronze colors in it. It's just really unique and it's really nicely done. Um, I've carried this in my pocket and so far I haven't had any problems with it scratching or anything like that. So I think it's fairly durable as well. On the clip, you've got the uh, name that's laser etched on there. You can feel that um, onto the surface. The body here is eight sided um, at the top and then it kind of blends in where it's a little bit softer here. And then down here at the bottom on the grip area, it's molded into four flats. And as I rotate that, hopefully you can see that. And then back down here at the tip, you're back down to the uh, more squarish eight side. The bolt here itself is um, a little bit rectangular with rounded corners and you've got three lines on it to provide some grip and jimping there. The clip is this last area that I'll talk about. It is uh, machined out of the same titanium as the rest of the pin or aluminum or whatever material uh, your pin is in. Um, but the problem here is there's just so little clearance. And I don't know how well that uh, shows up on camera. I'll have some pictures to put in as well. But here's the case. And I mean, it's tough to get that case over here, uh, the lip of that. There's just no clearance room for material. This won't fit over a pair of pants, um, even the thinnest dress pants that I own. It's almost like it's designed to fit a piece of paper, that's it. Um, if you had a, you know, a dress shirt with a, or a top pocket, this might fit in that okay, but that's about it. For me, this clip is probably the biggest drawback of this pin and would prevent me from uh, probably actually EDCing it in my pocket without putting it in a different uh, holder or something like that. So this pin is a little bit difficult to disassemble and take the cartridge out, but let me show you that. To do this, you do need the smaller Allen wrench, and I'm unsure of the size of this. Um, pretty simple though, just unscrew the top cap. In the very center uh, there, you've got a set screw, and you put your Allen wrench in there and loosen it up. And this is difficult to do on camera. Okay, now that I've got that set screw removed, make sure to uh, keep track of it, it's very small. You can run the bolt up 
take the tension off it, and then this bolt just um, comes out. And what I do is I just push down on that a little bit to relieve some tension, and the bolt here, as you can see, just comes out. Now, an important part about uh, reassembly here, you can see this has got just a little bit of a milled flat in it. That's always going to uh, point up towards the top, and that's what that set screw is going to screw into. From there, you've got the round top of your bolt, and it is does work either way. You can see it's hollow on the inside there. And then you've got your cartridge and spring. This is a generic uh, Parker cartridge that this uses, so that's great. You can easily um, swap that out if you wish. Reassembly is really the opposite. Uh, I will do that off camera. And this is the only tricky bit. You've got to have the uh, bolt handle here with that flat part facing up. As I mentioned before, the clip uses T6 Torx screws, and uh, luckily a small T6 Torx wrench is included in the package of the pin. The clip is not required to be removed for disassembly or for the cartridge to be changed. So size and weight, I measured this at 119 millimeters, diameter at 11 millimeters. Weight with the cartridge is 33.6 grams. This is a little bit shorter than your standard pin. Uh, here's a Pilot G2 um, lined up and you can see that G2 is a little bit longer in overall length. The shorter size of the Astrolux doesn't bother me at all, it's just fine. Um, got a couple other pins here as well. This top one is a uh, Nightcore NT30 or NTP30. And then this bottom one is the uh, TI Scribe in brass. For comparisons on weight here, my brass TI Scribe bolt uh, with the cartridge is 34.9 grams. My Nightcore NTP30 is uh, also in titanium is 28.8 grams. So the Astrolux being made of uh, even titanium is a little bit uh, heavier compared to the other bolt action pins I have. So how's it feel in my hand and how's the bolt action? At first I wasn't super impressed with the bolt here. It uh, is a little bit notchy and clicky as you can probably hear. And the tolerances aren't quite as tight as my other uh, bolt action pins. But then again, the price of this isn't uh, as high either. It's not bad, don't get me wrong. It uh, definitely works just fine. And because of those tolerances, you get a little bit more play in the body and more noise. I think part of that's that spring in the front end as well. The downward stroke takes a little bit of force um, to get it to go, but that's not bad either. It's not too much. Uh, it doesn't dig into your finger or anything like that. And here's the sound of it. After this uh, pin has broken in a little bit, um, all those issues seem to be better. So I, it's one of those that gets better with age. I also could probably put a little lubricant in there and I haven't done that either. As for in the hand, um, as I mentioned before, this light's got four flats here for kind of the grip area. And that just doesn't fit great with how I hold a pen in my hand. I kind of use this three finger method. Um, not sure what you use. And to do that, I've got to just rotate my fingers into a position that's not 100% natural for me. So for me, it's not bad, it's just not great either. Um, I've been using this in meetings for a couple of weeks at work and it's just fine, it does the job. I'm not writing all day, so it's fine, but if I was gonna write all day long if, with this and take a ton of notes, I might wanna use a different pen. So how it writes here, I can kind of doodle and show you out. This is a standard uh, generic median tip ballpoint pen cartridge. It's nothing fancy. It's black ink. It's kind of got that purpley metallic shine to it. Um, it works fine. It works like your uh, cheap Bic pens, nothing fancy again. But the good thing being a Parker cartridge, you can um, put better cartridges in this. And that's what I, I'll probably do. I'll probably pick up a blue cartridge since that's what I prefer and uh, put a nice gel cartridge in there. And like I said, it does require your uh, Allen key to change the cartridge in here. So this isn't something you're gonna swap in easily or maybe do on a trip. Not bad, but uh, not the easiest either. Uh, most of my other pins are easily able to swap in a cartridge with no tools required. So for me, the pros are it's pretty affordable, especially in aluminum. It's like less than $20, I think with a coupon. Um, titanium and stainless steel do cost more. I love that it uses a uh, common Parker style refill. 
That means refills are easy to find. You don't have to order anything off the internet. You can easily go to your office store or probably even Target and find a, a refill. And this wave pattern is really beautiful. There's two other titanium models that all have beautiful anodizing. By far, these are the prettiest pins I own, and it's the least expensive, uh, high-end, kind of tactical type pin. I guess that's one other thing worth noting here. You could use this for tactical purposes. It is titanium, it's pretty beefy, it's pretty strong. It, it'd do the job. So the cons for me is uh, that pocket clip basically has no clearance whatsoever for any type of material. For me, that means I'm not gonna be carrying this in my pocket by itself. Um, I'll use the uh, pouch that it came with and put the pouch in my pocket, which isn't quite as secure. Disassembly requires tools and is a little bit complex, a little bit fiddly. There are little parts to lose, so make sure you're real careful and do that over a table. And that four-sided grip area isn't quite as nice as a three-sided or round grip. There isn't any texture on the grip either. It's not bad, but it certainly could be an area for improvement. So my conclusion is, if you were looking for an inexpensive bolt action pin to try out, and want something to take the look, take a standard cartridge that you could really get anywhere. This is a great choice of a pin to get started. I love what Astrolux has decided to do, uh, make this pin in three different materials at three different price points. That allows everyone to try a nicer pin at any standpoint. Kind of like what Astrolux does with their flashlights. They're good at making a budget-oriented version. And if you want a fancier version, they'll do that too. I'm a huge titanium fan, so that's the one I went with. But your anodized aluminum is probably your best bang for your buck here. I'll have links to those all three options. Definitely make sure you check the links below um, to check these out on Banggood and make sure you check the description for any discounts that I'm offering. If you've enjoyed my first pin review, please let me know in the comments below. I've got a couple other pins here that I could review in the future, such as my Nikkor NTP30 or USG uh, TI Scribe in brass. And I'd love to get more pins on the channel to review and uh, give you guys my opinions of them. As always, thanks for watching these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share to your friends. And as always, catch you on the next review.